Hey there, seems like some of you have been on the hunt for a 60% mechanical keyboard that does it all. Wireless connectivity, hot swap sockets, RGB LEDs, USB Type-C, and much more. Well, the Velocifier M2 aims to do all of it for a retail price of $70, and we'll see if it delivers in the following. You get the keyboard in a fairly minimal brown box. It's stuck between two foam blocks, and you also get a braided USB cable, then a keycap spooler and a switch spooler. Taking a look at the keyboard itself, it has a nice plastic case, quite thick and made from a durable material. It looks very similar to the Ant Pro 2's case. Like on the Ant Pro, it has four thin rubber feet and an on-off switch for the wireless mode, the main difference being the USB Type-C port, which is close to center instead of at the left. In terms of layout, you get a standard NC layout, so replacing keycaps will be fairly easy if you want to. Included keycaps are ABS double shot with an OEM profile. Given the price of the keyboard, it's not too bad. The font is clean and overall they should be durable. Velocifier will also have a version with PBD keycaps for around $10 more, so that's something to look for as well. The main downside is that it seems like some keys had tiny cracks in the white material. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but that doesn't look too great. In terms of switches, this keyboard is offered with Outemu switches. I specifically asked for browns, and I'm not a fan of Outemu switches in general. They're not terrible, but I would have preferred Gaterons, Kales, or Cherries, as these feel a bit clunky, I'd say. One thing that could improve the situation is the keyboard's hot swappable switch sockets, but unfortunately these are out of mood too, and not only are they really hard to remove without damaging the switch housing itself, they also don't really support other switch brands, at least I've tried with Gaterons and Kales and both had a contact pin that was a bit too big to fit. That's really unfortunate they didn't go with the more common Kale hot swap sockets, they pretty much support any switch and are easier to remove, resulting in less broken switches. So overall, although the keyboard has hot swappable sockets, I consider these not really better than a regular soldered keyboard. As you'll be limited to Automu switches anyway, the only advantage I see is easier replacement if a switch breaks, but that's not really worth mentioning. Stabilizers are okay, they wobble a bit, but are not factory lubed, so lubing them would probably help and they look like the good kind of stabilizers, so there's something to work with at least, I'd say. Typing on this keyboard is okay overall, stabilizers are okay, and these Outemu switches are better than what I expected, but it's not the most amazing experience either. For around the same price, you can go with the GK61 with optical switches, the overall typing experience is better, and you get Gateron switches. This keyboard also has a software to configure it, although I'm starting to think that a lot of these cheap boards are using the same software with a different skin. It's laid out and works the same as the Mantis Tech GK3-61 I reviewed two years ago, and the Fikir Machinist one I reviewed recently was still connected to my PC when I tested the software, and it was affected by it, so, so I guess it's customizable. Um, but yeah, so the, the GK keyboards definitely have their own software, Durgat keyboards and the Ant Pro 2, but it seems like most of these other cheap boards have the same software and firmware on board. With it, you can remap the main layer, but not the second layer, so I can't move the function key or the arrow keys, unfortunately. Then you can control LED lights, although they're not super bright with the black plates. You get a bunch of animations and key-by-key -key color settings, which is cool. Then you can disable some keys that are gaming-specific, and you can record macros and assign them to keys on board. While it's cool that you can customize the board, and not being able to relocate keys like function and not being able to remap second layer keys is quite unfortunate. Also, by default, the bottom right section acts as arrow keys, and you only get these keys default behaviors by holding down function, and I would like to have this behavior inverted, which doesn't seem to be possible, and that's really annoying as the RK61 allows that. 
This keyboard also offers wireless connectivity and it works great overall. You can switch between wired and wireless with function plus R and the transition between my Mac and Windows PC is super quick, so that's great. They also offer Mac and Windows layouts, although I think they inverted them as on my Mac, the Mac layout gave me function keys, while the Windows layout gave me shortcuts to screen brightness, mission control, media controls, and more as labeled on the keys. Overall, latency is very good, but I can't say much about the battery life since they don't mention the Bluetooth version they're using. The battery has a capacity of 1800 mAh, so almost as much as the Ampro 2. So final thoughts on this keyboard. It launched on Kickstarter for $50 with an estimated MSRP of $70. I'd say at $50, bucks, it is not too bad. The other option I would have in mind at that price point is the GK61 with Gateron optical switches. While the GK61 offers a lot more customizability in terms of key remappings and better switches, the Velocifier M2 offers wireless connectivity and double shot keycaps, and the case is better quality overall. However, at $70, you're starting to get into Amp Pro 2 territory, and the Amp Pro 2 is simply a better buy at this point. It has everything the M2 has, but also better PBD keycaps, better switches, better software, and it's more customizable. The only thing that the Amp Pro 2 doesn't have is hot swap sockets, but these Automu sockets only allow for other Automu switches, and the risk of breaking your switches when removing them is a bit too high for me. So yeah, maybe get if it's on sale, but at $70, it would not be my top recommendation. And that's it for today. While it's not necessarily the best option for everyone, if you're looking for great Bluetooth connectivity at a low price, this might be a good option for you. I'll have a link to this keyboard in the description if you're interested. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know why in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.